What up, y'all? We're doing a book hub. It's gonna be a significantly shorter one today, not like 115 books like we're last time. We're actually doing an end of the month one like we said we were going yeah, to. Yeah, so this is one month's accumulation of books. So, um, we're also doing a giveaway. We're announcing the winner for this at the end of the video and the new giveaway um, at the end of the video. So if you want to skip forward to that, feel free. There's if you gonna wanna... be two winners this time. Oh, shoot. That's pretty good. And I'm also gonna be doing a third one on my Instagram. So you have two chances to win on here and one on my Instagram. All right, all right. Ready? Ready, Freddy. Wait, we're starting with this one. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right guys, so we've been collecting these since they started coming out. Um, kind of and this is the fourth book in the illustrated Harry Potter books like look at look how fat this is and it's like there's these amazing beaut that's not so beautiful but like he kind of looks like like he kind of looks upset about something but like it's 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 basically the whole book it is the whole book I don't know why I said basically I don't want to ruin anything but there's these awesome arts in here why can't I open to a good one Make, help me open to a good one. That's not a good one. This one. Oh, there you go. There we go. We got the express here. There's someone flying. There's a bird. Um, but anyway, you know, you get the gist. All right? You get the gist of it. They're beautiful. The very nice artwork. And it just kind of helps you, like, imagine. Oh, this is when they were going up to the hill for the, uh, for the festival. Right? That's in the beginning of the book. This is the beginning of the book. Oh, I thought you were at the end for some reason. <laughs> oh my god, what do you mean? The beginning. They're going to the tournament. Yeah, that's cool. What, what does the naked book look like? I don't know, but look, look at this. Ooh. It's pretty nice. It's kind of boring. Well, it's just a I big, love that orange, a though. A big blue book. You're going to wreck this. It's hard. I'm trying to not like wreck it. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, it also has a little page saver thing. Oh, yeah, page yeah. Mark. Look. Ribbon, whatever. What is that called? Ribbon. Is that what it's called? I don't know. If it has a technical name. Forty-eight dollars. We did not pay forty-eight dollars. Oh lordy. Ooh, that is creepy. Yeah, that's that's a cool picture. I'm glad I opened it. A good one. So check that out. Obviously, we all know who those guys are, but like that just looks super, super scary and cool. So it will go with our collection. Maybe one day we'll actually look through all of them. We have it. We haven't looked through all of them. It's exciting. Someday. We should just do like a long video where we just go page by page. If you guys want to see that, let us know. Did we show the cover? Like, look at that. That's a cool picture. Look. Oh, it's so nice. The other ones are really nice, I feel like too. everyone's probably hauling this book this month. Whatever. Whatever. Then we also got White Sand 3, which is um, Brandon Sanderson's, like, comic book. They're Isn't so that tiny. Baba Yaga or whatever? Wait, no. What's her name again? Oh, jeez. From the Studio Ghibli movie? From Spirited Away? I can't remember her name. How did she get over She's there? okay. She's okay. She's fine there. She's like a ninja. She's fine there. So yeah, um, I don't know anything about this. We're pretty much leaving this for like last in our Brandon Sanderson Cosmere reading. This is part of the Cosmere. There's only three volumes out right now. This is the third one. No idea if there's going to be a fourth one and when it's going to come out. I mean, it, we're only going to read this like next year. Yeah, Same literally. Time. I've heard nothing but crazy hype about this book so far. It is. It comes out in February. It's called um, The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood. And I've seen it on some Instagram pages, some Twitter pages. I've looked up reviews on Goodreads, and people are saying, like, such good things about it. I'm just going to read... What am I going to read? There's not much about it written on here. It says... Fantasy debut everyone's talking about. Captivating tale of an orc priestess who turns away from her foretold death to become a wizard's assassin. Is that how you do a synopsis, Meek? Yeah, that's a good synopsis, but it, like, I don't know if I want to read that. Like, I do. An orc priestess that was supposed to die decides to become an assassin for a wizard. For a wizard. You love wizards. Yeah, but I don't love assassins. Do I look like a rogue? You love me and I'm a rogue. 
I randomly got this one sent to me. I didn't ask for it. It's called A Cruel Deception by Charles Todd. I'm going to be soon, I'm going to be soon, soon I'm going to be doing an unhaul video. I know it's really crappy of me to be mentioning this right as I'm hauling it, but um, I just feel like I have some books that were sent to me unsolicited that my mom would like a lot because she reads a lot of like mystery thriller type books. And so I'm going to be sending some to her and I think I'm going to donate quite a few. So let me know if that's a video you would like to see, like an unhaul type video. However, this isn't usually my type of book, um, but I figured I would show it to you guys and read you the synopsis in case it sounds interesting to you. Yeah, I don't dislike that cover. You want to hold it for I me? I don't, it's... no. In the aftermath of World War I, English nurse Bess Crawford attempts to save a troubled officer from a mysterious killer in this 11th book in the acclaimed Bess Crawford mystery series. This is the 11th book? How are you... Okay. November 1918 ended the fighting, but the Great War will not be over until a peace treaty is drawn up and signed by all parties involved. Representatives uh, from the Allies are gathering in Paris, and already ominous signs of disagreement have appeared. Uh, Sister Bess Crawford, who's been working with the severely wounded in England in the war's wake, is asked to carry out a personal mission in Paris for a matron at the London headquarters of the Queen Alexandra's. Uh, I don't know if this is like a standalone type thing where you can just read it without reading the others. I fell asleep with my eyes open. During, look at my eyes. eyes. I don't know what happened there. Like I just like, I yawned and then I, I died. How long was I out for? Feels like ages. I honestly don't even think that's like my mom's type of book. But, yeah, if it appeals to you, check it out. We're, we're Just so you guys know, we are, we, we kind of, fantasy, sci-fi, action, adventure, fun, that's our cup of tea. That's our favorite, but I do read other stuff. Like, I do read some adult novels that aren't fantastical. But um, they're usually not fantastic either. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Memoirs of Geisha is one of my favorite books of all time. Yeah, but like, it's not that good, so. <laughs> and you only like it because you like Japan. And you like J Japanese things, and you're a weeb. So, that's, that's the only reason you like it. <laughs> that's not true. Mika, my back hurts. My little back. Can you massage my backy backs? Can you please just give me a little massage in the back? I did not ask for this book, but they sent it to me. Salty Bitter Sweet. A Thanks. Fresh Start, A Broken Heart, A Menu of Possibilities by Myra Cuevas. Cuevas? This one comes out March 3rd. It, you're going to hate this book. I uh, can't wait. I love hating books. Go. Aspiring chef Isabella Fields' family has fallen mm -hmm. apart since the death of her abuela and the divorce... That means uh, grandmother. grandmother. Damn it. And the divorce of her parents. She moves in with her dad and her new stepmom, Margot, in La Lyon, France where Isa or Isa feels like an outsider in her father's new life. She balances her time between avoiding the awkward why did you cheat on mom conversation and figuring out how a perpetually single woman can at least be a perpetually single chef. So it's like a figuring out your life contemporary type of story. Which I know some people really like those. Let me know if you wanted me to do a giveaway for this book. It's your favorite, Meek. I was like, I was like, okay, where is this leading? I, the whole time I'm like, okay, doesn't sound so bad, doesn't sound so bad, and then you ended it, and I was like, nothing's nah, gonna happen. I didn't read the second paragraph. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, I want to see where this leads, please. The upside of her world being turned upside down. She's now located only 30 minutes from the restaurant of the world famous chef Gr Gordon Ramsay. Gratard, Gratard, who runs a prestigious, competitive international kitchen apprenticeship. Gordon Ramsay. The prize job at Chef, whatever his name is, renowned restaurant, represents a transformative opportunity for her who is desperate to get her life back in order and desperate to prove she has what it takes to work in the hot kitchen. Hot kitchen? So the, sec the second part of that sounds way better. 
But her stress and repressed grief uh. begin to unravel when the attractive and enigmatic Diego shows up unannounced. How can she expect to hold it together when she's at the bottom of her apprenticeship uh, class? Her it. new stepmom is pregnant. She uh, misses her abuela dearly, and things with Diego get over it. reach a boiling point. Figure it out. I requested this. This book comes out this month, so November. The Crimson Flower by Julie Dow. She's the author of Forest of a Thousand Lanterns and... Um, Remember the Forest of Hands and Feet? What? Forest of Hands and Teeth. I liked that book. I didn't. <laughs> um, I really liked her first book. I didn't read the second one yet. I really need to because um, I really did like the first one. And this one, I think they all tie together, to be honest. And I don't know if I should read the synopsis, but let's see. They're very like fairy tale esque type stories, which I love. I'm, very, I'm so yawny right now. Stop yawning. Will love break the spell? I don't know if this is spoiling stuff, so just be prepared. While I have this book open, it may be spoiling the other ones. After cruelly rejecting Bao, the, the poor fisherman who loves her, Lan, a wealthy nobleman's daughter, regrets her actions. So when she finds Bao's prized flute floating in a boat near her house, she takes it into her care, not knowing that his soul has been trapped inside it by an evil witch who cursed Bao, telling him that the only love, only love will set him free. Though Bao now despises her, Lan vows to make amends and help break the spell. Together, the two travel across the continent, finding themselves in the presence of greatness in the forms of the Great Forest's Empress Jade and Commander Wei. They journey with Wei, getting tangled in the webs of war, blood magic, and romance along the way. Will Lan and Bao begin, begin to break the spell that's been placed upon them, or will they be doomed to live out their lives with black magic running through their veins? Ah, it just sounds so good. What part? The whole thing. Okay. Dude, whatever. I'm excited to read it. Let me know if you're excited to read it. Now, this book has gotten crazy ridiculous hype so far. So, I believe it came out in the UK already. Correct me if I'm wrong. Comes out here November 5th. It's called Shadow Scent. Um, but, yeah, it has crazy hype so far. And, uh, let's see. Perfume is power. Secrets are deadly. Betrayal is paid for in blood. I don't know how to say this name. Raquel has an uncanny gift for fragrances, but even in a world where scent is linked to power and prestige, her skills aren't enough to save her dying father. Ash bears the tattoos of an imperial bodyguard and is duty-bound to serve, or to join his prince, Nisai, on a dangerous mission. It's a challenge protecting Nisai on the road, but it's even harder for Ash to conceal a secret that would keep, that would see him executed. Raquel and Ash have nothing in common until they find themselves framed for a shocking crime, poisoning the prince. They flee the city and take off on a desperate journey in search of a legendary antidote. In order to save Nisai and clear their names, they'll have to decipher clues and defeat their own demons before the Imperial Army hunts them down. But can two people bearing the scars of betrayal learn to trust again before it's too late? Sounds really interesting. Sounds aight. And, uh, yeah, like I said, the, look hype, very long. the hype is real. It's not, really. It's like 300 and something pages. Let me know if you've heard about that book, and if you're excited. I randomly got this book the other day, but I think it's the other day. But I think it's out. Out. What is wrong with you? What? <laughs> I have to make everything letter Kenny. Um, Unnatural Magic by C.M. Wagner. Uh, this cover, I just love this cover. What do you think, Meek? I'll be the judge. I'll allow you to love it. <laughs> what is uh, it called? Unnatural Magic. Okay. Good name. Ona can write the parameters of a spell faster than any of the young men in her village school. But okay. despite her incredible abilities, she's denied a place at the nation's premier arcane academy. No good. Undaunted, she sails to the bustling city-states of Hexos, hoping to find a place at a university where they don't think there's anything untoward about providing a woman with a magical education. Why is it always, why is it always like that? But as soon as Ona arrives, she's drawn to the mysterious murders of four trolls. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Sira is a troll who never quite fit into her clan, despite being the leader's daughter. 
She decides to strike out on her own and look for work in a human city. But on her way, she stumbles upon the body of a half-dead human soldier in the snow. As she slowly nurses him back to health, an unlikely bond forms between them, one that is tested when an unknown mage makes an attempt on Sira's life. Soon, unbeknownst to each other, Ona and Sira become, or both devote their considerable talents to finding out who is targeting the trolls before their homeland is torn apart. Sounds interesting. That sounds really good. I'm down for it. We should read that together. Yeah. It's just like, not a bad, not the, I, I, I like that. A little too much information, but. You'll forget it, right? Yeah. You never forget anything. I never forget anything. I'm like an elephant. <laughs> They, I, um, so that was sent to me by Penguin. Penguin also sent this along with it. Now, I have seen this book, Novice Dragoneer. I like the cover. Dragon Academy novel. Mm. 14-year-old mm. Illith grew up in an orphanage and thanks to her stutter was never destined for much beyond kitchen work and cleaning. But she's dreamed of serving with the dragons ever since a childhood meeting with a glittering silver dragon and its woman Dragoneer. For years, she waits, and as soon as she's old enough to join, Illith runs away to become a novice dragoneer at the ancient human dragon fortress of the Serpentine. That was our dragon. While most of her fellow apprentices are from rich families, Illith must fight for her place in the world, even if it includes a duel with her boss at the fish guttable table. Gutting table, excuse me. Her path will leave her, lead her places she never imagined, whether it's joining the dragon dancers or taking charge of a sickly old dragon with a mysterious past, and to new heights as she takes her first flight into enemy lands. Dude, this one sounds freaking cool also. <laughs> Figured out. Also and awesome. What do you think? Sounds alright. I like silver dragons. What, Katie? What? Yeah? I'm going to pick you up, and then you're going to run away in two seconds. Figure it out. Yeah, why don't you figure it out? Yeah, figure it out. Okay, Meek. Meek, okay. <laughs> okay, Meek. Meek, okay. Okay, Meek. We got this beautiful... Ah, yeah, it's nice. ...re-release <sighs> of a classic. Come on, hurry up. Stop teasing. Dune. Look at it. It's like holographic. By Frank Herbert. I've never read this. Me neither. And uh, I hear it's very dense. Oh, just so heavy. <laughs> but look how gorgeous this cover is. I'm like loving every second of it. And I am really, really loving the fact that a lot of publishers now are doing the sprayed edges uh, for first edition copies of things. Wow. I like his green eyes or whatever color that is for his eyes. Yeah, the sprayed edges are cool. Whoa. There's like some cool, what is this called, this artwork? End like, pages. End pages. Pretty cool. What's the cover look like? Have you oh, seen look it? look at the Whoa! inside. Whoa! There's stuff on the inside. That is that. so cool. They should do that more often. Like a, like a, the book has something embossed in it too. A it's ring. A circle. It's a circle. And like, but even the way the dune is written on the side is neat. Fear is the mind killer. Dude, this whole, like, whoever created this whole, like, look did a really good job. I think this is, like, my favorite cover of the year. Oh, and then look at this. The inside is just, like, doom. And then the book. Yeah, the, it's just beautiful. Is the back end page is the same? The color scheme. No, the back is different. Ton of artwork, man. This is yeah. awesome. Ow, Sorry. stop hitting me, fees. <laughs> All right, let's put this back together. So, what do we know about Dune? Not much, besides it's a dense old fantasy. Is it? Did they, did they make a movie about it? Yeah, like a long time ago, I think. Oh. Be careful. Set on the desert planet Arrakis, Dune is the story of the boy Paul Atreides, heir to a noble family, tasked with ruling an inhospitable world where the only thing of value is the spice melange, a drug capable of extending life and enhancing consciousness. Coveted across the known universe, melange is a prize worth killing for. 
When House Atreides is betrayed, the destruction of Paul's family will set the boy on a journey toward uh, a destiny greater than he could ever have had imagined. Can't English. As he evolves into the mysterious man known as Maudib, he will bring to fruition humankind's most ancient and unattainable dream. A stunning blend of adventure and mysticism, environmentalism and politics, Dune won the first Nebula Award, shared the Hugo Award, and formatted the basis of what is undoubtedly the grandest epic in science fiction. Hmm. Also, it's not fantasy. No, it's sci-fi, Mick. What do you think? I would read it. I just love this book. I mean, it's a f it's forty dollars. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I'm sure you can get it cheaper than that. Yeah, but I mean, the retail price is forty U.S. dollars. It's like fifty four Canadian. <sighs> Sorry, Canada. We love you. So I joined Book of the Month, finally, after saying I wanted to join it forever. I'm not a um, fan of this. I like, I didn't do the YA one because to me the YA one really isn't that great of a deal. I'm paying for this. I know a lot of YouTubers get it for free, but I don't. Um, I tried, <laughs> but I didn't. But, uh... The YA one doesn't seem like a good deal to me because YA books usually are about anywhere from ten to fifteen dollars when you want them. Um, however, adult books are really expensive, and especially these books that tend to be on Book of the Month tend to be really expensive, like twenty five dollars per book on Amazon even. So I figured for fifteen bucks you get. A good book. Apparently, Book of the Month has been around for like 80 years or something like that. And I thought it was like a newer thing. It's been around forever. And apparently, they're like renowned for picking out really good books. Anywho, I saw that they finally had a fantasy book on there. And I don't know if I've ever seen a fantasy book on there. And I really wanted to check it out. It's called Fate of the Fallen by Kel Cade. Purpley. Ooh. Purpley Green. It's actually lavender. So tell them about the little logo thing. Yeah, they all have that Book of the Month logo on it, which is probably, realistically, how they're able to sell it for cheaper. Um, they probably have, like, a deal with them. Who knows? Cause it's I know weird, though, because they have to, like, custom make all this stuff. Even the hardcover is actually has that on it. Yeah. My mom used to get... Um, and it says, the, and it says the, the month, month and the, the year. This book, you actually got a month early, too, if you got it on Book of the Month. Oh, okay, before it came out. Yeah, okay. I think they had three options this month in October where you got the book a month early. Um, it looks but, like that guy's carrying a dead head. Yeah, it does. But anyway, like my mom used to do something similar to this, but I think it was like Doomsday or something like that. Blo Bloomsbury, maybe? I know Bloomsbury is a, a publisher, but they she used to do something like this where you, they all had like that logo thing on it. I don't really mind. It doesn't bother me. Not all stories have happy endings. Everyone loves Matthias. Naturally, when he discovers it's his destiny to save the world, he dives in, t in headfirst, pulling his best friend, Aslo, along for the ride. However, saving the world isn't as easy as it sounds in the stories. The going gets rough, the folks start to believe their best chance for survival is to surrender to the forces of evil, which isn't how the prophecy goes, at all. As the list of allies grows thin and the friends find themselves staring death in the face, they must decide how to become the heroes they were destined to be or, fa or failing that, how to survive. It just sounds, like, cool to me. Like, ugh, the synopsis may it seem kind of like a... <laughs> What did you just say? This is not the Mick Mick and <laughs> Let's try that again. This, <laughs> the synopsis makes it seem kind of like a Kings of the Wild-esque type story, but not, like, I don't know how to describe it. But I'm like, I really want to read this. It sounds super cool to me. I'm going to be honest with you. I zoned out that whole time that you were reading that synopsis. What? And I was thinking about our bookshelf video that we're going to record soon and i was just like that whole time until i heard the synoptic no no whatever you just said and i was just like wait what did i just hear was that english do you want me to reread it to you i got it, is it good? i mean we Does don't it... have to keep put it in Does it sound good it, off. it does to me all right reread it the end it sounds kind of cliche it might, I'm pro i bet it's done pretty well though i hope so 
Then I also got this. So that's another thing that Book of the Month does. Um, if you get their subscription, you can do add-on books for like 10 bucks. <laughs> I just boogered on myself. It was disgusting. Can you sanitize? Oh man, <laughs> I just breathed and it came out like that day when I when you laughed at me like this. One cool thing that I really like about Book of the Month is you can pick another up to two more books for ten dollars a piece to add to your box, which this book on Amazon at the time was like twenty five dollars, and I got it for ten dollars. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, and this book has ridiculous hype. I'm sure everyone knows what it's about. Uh, I'm not going to go into the synopsis because literally like every booktuber has read this and told you the synopsis and whatever. What's it about? All right. I guess I'll read it to you because Kaibox wants me to. Thank you. I like it. But this book, I can't. I, I, I mean, I, I kind of like the little month thing written on it. Cause yeah? it's like, I don't know. Kind of exclusive. It's like, it's like, oh, that's cool. This was from this and month or whatever. The, so this one was from August. Um... So do they have one book a month you, and then have, you can get like a previous book as an add-on? Yes. Okay. So the, no, well you choose one a month. You get to choose. So it's like five picks and you choose which one you want. And if you don't want any, you can skip it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know how that works though. Can someone explain that to me? Because you pay ahead of time. Yeah. So you would just skip it and have the credit for the next month. So they don't charge you for the following I month. would assume. I would hope so. Figure it out. Figure it out. I can't. I just got lipstick everywhere, probably. You're good. When Rowan Kane stumbles across the ad, she's looking for something else completely. But it seems like too good an opportunity to miss. A live-in nanny post with a staggeringly generous salary. And when she arrives at Heath Bray House, she's smitten by the luxurious smart home fitted out with all modern conveniences by the beautiful Scottish Highlands and by this picture-perfect family. What she doesn't know is that she's stepping into a nightmare, one that will end with a child dead and herself in prison awaiting trial for murder. Writing to her loyal lawyer from prison, she struggles to explain the unraveling events that led to her incarceration. It wasn't just the constant, constant surveillance from the cameras installed around the house or the malfunctioning technology that woke the household with booming music or turned the lights off at the worst possible time. It wasn't just the girls who turned out to be a far cry from the immaculately behaved model children she met at her interview. It wasn't even the way she was left alone for weeks at a time with no adults around apart from the enigmatic handyman Jack Grant. It was everything. She knows she made mistakes. She admits that she lied to obtain the post and that her behavior toward the children wasn't always ideal. She's not innocent by any means, but she maintains she's not guilty, at least not of murder, which means someone else is. Full of spellbinding menace and told in Ruth Ware's signature suspenseful style. I, it sounds cool. It seems like it would make a really good TV show. Yeah. I just like, so I was thinking of soon doing like, you know, reading some books outside of my comfort zone. And this isn't normally something I would read. However, it does sound really intriguing to me. So I do want to read it. Um, and I got it for really cheap. I like so. it. I think it sounds interesting. Sounds Good almost pick. like they're trying to make it like a ghost story, right? No. Not at all. Or technology taking over the universe. Uh, just the world. So I have a friend. Oh, man, we got so many left. I have a friend who... Ha, <laughs> lies. ...went to uh, Comic-Con Comic -Con in New York. And I've been trying to get this book and haven't been able to, but he got it and sent it to me, so thank you. Um, I'll put his Twitter down below, because uh, that's how I found out he even got this book. And then, yeah. But it's The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lou. She's a famous author. Like, everyone's heard of her. Um, but this one sounded interesting to me. This one comes out in March. Born with a gift for music, Nannerl Mozart has just one wish, to be remembered forever. But even as she delights audiences with her masterful playing, she has little hope she'll ever become the acclaimed composer she longs to be. She's a young woman in the 18th century Europe, and that means composing is forbidden to her. She will perform only until she reaches a marriageable age. Her tyrannical father has made that much clear. As her hope grows dimmer with each passing year, the talents of her beloved brother, Wolfgang, only seems to shine brighter. His brilliance uh, begins to... Ex 
His brilliance begins to eclipse her own until one day a mysterious stranger from a magical land appears with an ir irresistible offer. He has the power to make her wish come true, but his help may cost her everything. It just sounds like, because I mean, if you know anything about Mozart, which her last name is Mozart. And his, her brother is Mozart. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. <laughs> So it's like, it sounds like a cool twist on like reality, like history and like with a magical element. Like it just sounded so cool to me. Yeah. You got this book. Oh, yeah. He met an old man one day. What was his name? Walt Dirk Dirks. And apparently he wrote, hold on. Well, the book is called Fragments, World War II, A Kid in Brooklyn. So, I don't know. This guy wrote this book. He met him, and the guy gave him a copy of the book. And uh, it just sounds interesting. And I like reading. I don't know if I'll read it ever, to be honest. But um, it gave me, like, nostalgic feels when he told me about it. Because, like, my grandfather was in World War II, and I've heard so many stories about it. Um but yeah, this says, Walt Dirks illuminates the everyday lives and adventures of young kids coming of age in Brooklyn during World War II. The main goal, the goal of most of them, get out of the house. The street was where the action was. It could be a stickball game featuring a pink spaldine and a broomstick or hooking a ride on a passing trolley car. There were other diversions, some perfectly legal, some bordering on stepping over into forbidden territory. So like, this is an autobiography, right? I think it's, yeah, like... Yeah, a kinda, memoir. Yeah. <clears throat> like of, his... like, his life during World War Two. So, that's that. Then... This Savage War by Esther Wallace. Uh, I saw... I, okay. We were at... Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble one day. Uh, I think we did a vlog about it. Um, and then <clears throat> we're getting some coffee, and this was over by the uh, the thing. Starbucks. Starbucks. And uh, I think it's somebody that works at, at that Barnes & Noble. Yeah, so it's and, a local author. And uh, she wrote that. It's a she, right? She wrote this book. Uh, so we're like, hey, what's up with this book? Why is this, like, separate and, like, like on display? And they were like, oh, it's one of the authors here. She, she works here. And we were like, oh, cool. We'll check it out. And then uh, so we contacted her. She sent us that book, mm -hmm. and then uh, you started reading it. I did. I mean, to be honest, it's not really for me. I'm, I'm sad to say. However, if it sounds appealing to you, definitely check it out. Um, it's very focused on war and, like, politics of war. So if that's something you like, you'll probably really enjoy it. I got, like, 100 pages in, and that was pretty much the gist of it up until, like, this point. Um, it says, a young shepherd boy sets out to find his calling and stumbles upon a land at war. Arneson of Enchantress Island must wrestle with the purpose of honor and the conflicts that arise when it's called into question. Valoretta, Princess of Mira, has been chosen to be her father's successor, but at what cost? Her country is in conflict, conspiracies abound, and the native population has risen against her father, King Miro, and their people. Everything changes when Arneson and Valoretta join forces to secure the future of Mira. I didn't get that far. It may be something that I'll try to pick up again in the future, but it just, it got a little too war politicky for me, and I just didn't know where it was going to go, and I just have so many other things that, like this time that I need to read and just wanted to read, and it just wasn't piquing my interest. However... So it actually like kind of shocked me by how well it was written, but it just really wasn't for me, unfortunately. All right, so this was uh, last month's book uh, that was that was the giveaway, part of the giveaway, and uh, we'll put the the winner on the screen right now. So all you have to do is uh, we're gonna send you an email. You just respond to the email with the information that we ask you on there, and then uh, we'll be shipping this out to you probably in the next couple weeks. Um, and we're doing another giveaway. Yeah. So this is actually part of my haul also. So I was contacted by St. Martin's Press, um, asking if I wanted to check out these books and they sounded interesting. So I said yes. And they said that I can give away three sets of books. So 
they're gonna send book one and two to this series to three different people. I'm gonna do two people on YouTube and one on my Instagram. So you will get both of these books sent to you by the, um, the publishing company once I tell them who wins. And yeah. So same as uh, as always, there's a link down below. Just follow that link to the um, to the to the giveaway, and then uh, there's multiple ways to enter, and you can enter multiple times as well. Um, also, you're gonna have to leave a comment down below, letting us know anything about these books, if you're interested in any of them, if you've read any of them, and also include the word meow. <laughs> So to tell you a little more about these books, this one is called For the Killing of Kings by Howard Andrew Jones. Ow. Yeah, ow. You're stuck on me now, you idiot. Yeah. All right, let's see. The naked is just blue with some gold. As you like to say, the common one. What, is that what you say? Like, gold and silver are the two most yeah. common. Their peace was a fragile thing, but it had endured for seven years, mostly because the people of... Durasus and the king of Naur hordes believe his doom was foretold upon the edge of the great sword hung in the hall of champions. Yeah. Unruly Naur clans might raid across the border, but the king himself would never lead his people to war so long as the blade remained in the hands of his enemies. But when Squire Elenai's aging mentor uncovers evidence that the sword in their hall is a forgery, she's forced to flee Durasus for her life. Only her ally... No, her only ally, the reckless, disillusioned archer, Kirkinall. Framed for murder and treason, pursued by the greatest heroes of the realm, they flee into the dangerous, ever-shifting lands beyond the border. While they face monsters and world-shaping storms, as they search for the real sword, the brilliant Varama and the roguish, roguish Rylan plunder a hero's tomb and infiltrate the Hall of the Mages, uncovering a conspiracy that leads all the way to Duras and Queen and her secret, secretive advisors. The four must find a way to clear their names and set things right, all while dodging friends determined to kill them. And the Noor hordes invading at the last, no, invading at last with a new and deadly weapon. Sounds cool. I don't know if I care for the cover so much. I like their outfits. It reminds me of that. Full Metal Alchemist. Is that what you are going to say? No. Uh, stealing sorcery in those. Oh, no, not, uh, not me. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a good book. Um, so then this one is coming out in November, so... Is, is that a sequel to that? Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is a sequel, Upon the Flight of the Queen. Don't read the synopsis. I know, I don't want to read the synopsis, but this one's coming out, so you will get a copy of both if you win the giveaway. They're both going to be hardcover, you think? Yeah, I think they're both going to be finished copies okay, of okay. the book. We do have a uh, wrap-up TBR video coming out, and this book is going to be on my November TBR, so I'm hoping I can get to it. Um, it's going to be quite an ambitious TBR, so we shall see. But I'm pretty excited to read them. And that's it. I still feel like this haul was pretty long. It took a while. But, uh... Are you okay? My back see waxies. Hurt sees word sees. You have a kitty witty. I do. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to uh, enter that giveaway if you're interested in these books. Um, they do seem interesting, so I'm hoping that they're I good. I like this cover. Uh, is there an audiobook for them? I don't know. I didn't look. Um, if you guys want to support the channel... <clears throat> oh. If you guys want to support the channel, um, you guys can go check out our Patreon. Uh, we do have a whole book thing on there where we talk about books uh, if you join that you can join the discord um we also do giveaways apparently every month now with these uh these book hauls so come back next book haul to see who won and then also to see what we're giving away next month right like i said um i have this book set going up on my instagram page also very soon so if you follow me i'll have rules on how to enter on there uh, you could also, you could also support the channel by, uh, using the Audible link in the description or the Amazon link in the description. It doesn't cost anything extra. It's just some, uh, it just helps the channel out. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, say bye, Mick. Bye, Mick. Uh, bye, bye, bye.